we have received uh, national and international acclaim for some of the actions that we're taking. Our residents invested uh, with us $200 million or approximately $200 million to make sure that Miami is here forever. Our strategies are falling into a variety of categories. The first, of course, is uh, resiliency we, and adaptation. We understand that we're dealing with climatic events on an almost daily basis, uh, certainly on a uh, multiple times a year basis, and we have to continue to do what we have to do as a city to be prepared for that. Uh, we went from a post-Andrew world, which was a uh, high wind event, to a post uh, Irma world, which was a, an incredible water event, to a Dorian world, where we saw the catastrophic of effects of a superstorm that some uh, believe should be uh, receive a new category, which is a category six. But what we're doing and our goals in this uh, climate ready strategy is number one, make sure that our decisions are data driven and human centered. Uh, we want to have a greenhouse gas inventory. We are uh, in the process of having flood monitors uh, put uh, throughout the city to see uh, our vulnerabilities. We want to inform, prepare, and engage our residents. And obviously, that's something that we've been doing. Uh, and Jane has done a magnificent job of maintaining the conversation going. Um, number three, we want to protect and enhance our waterfront. Uh, our, our vice chairman, when he was chairman, um, passed legislation to make sure that we are testing our water quality. Water quality is an enormous issue, not only in terms of drinking uh, water, but certainly in terms of our bay and the health of our bay, uh, which is a tremendous economic engine and certainly something that we enjoy tremendously. We want to obviously invest in our resilient and smart infrastructure. Uh, we've already begun that process by uh, putting in place a couple of pumps since Irma in the Brickle and Mary Brickle area, uh, 50 uh, backflow preventers uh, throughout the city. And, uh, and we want to promote adaptive neighborhoods and buildings um, and continue to create a sustainable uh, city. So uh, we're very honored uh, to stand here before you all with this uh, and present to you this Miami Forever Climate Ready Strategy. Uh, we're going to be outlining in the state of the city um, our carbon neutrality pledge uh, to C40. Um, we're going to do everything that we can, not only as a government, but also uh, to promote carbon neutrality as a community and as a city and promote policies that will ensure that we are not only uh, not contributing to, to the pollution of our environment and to our uh, ecosystem, but that we're actually um, beneficiaries. And of course, we talk a lot about uh, ad uh, adaptation and mitigation, and we want to start thinking about how do we reverse some of the effects of climate change and our climate impacts. And that's something that we're gonna be talking about going forward as well. Um, I'd like to recognize not only the vice chair who's here with me, but Commissioner Reyes, uh, who's also here, uh, and thank them for their support. Uh, without the commission, without the commissioners, uh, it would be impossible for us to have a coherent strategy. We, in the administration, put together the strategies, and Jane does a great job in our Department of Public Works and Resiliency, um, Alan Dodd, who's behind me, um, which is the execution arm of our city, uh, do a great job, but ultimately our commission has to buy in uh, and has to bless whatever we're doing that it's for the benefit of our residents. So, um, As uh, Mayor Suarez mentioned earlier, we have a very important leadership in this city. Uh, from here, we're going to go down to commission meeting. I invite you all to join us. I'm going to make a, a, a briefing to the commissioner that summarizes the elements of this plan. Uh, I invite you all to join us there. Uh, it will be early in the agenda, so uh, we'd love to have you there. Thank you, Chairman. Any person who is a lobbyist pursuant to Chapter 2, Article 6 of the City Code must register with the City Clerk. And I just want to congratulate the Chief Resilience Officer and her team, the administration and the commissioners for the hard work on this. This is a critical issue for the city, how we prepare for climate change impacts and what's coming in a city that is so vulnerable. Um, this is an approach that is people-centered, data-centered. It includes our neighborhoods, and it protects our infrastructure. I urge you to work on this diligently and expeditiously. I recognize for personal appearances, Ms. Jane Gilbert, you have two minutes to address this body. I'm sorry, 10 minutes to address this body. Good morning, commissioners. Jane Gilbert, Chief Resilience Officer for the City of Miami. 
Thank you for the opportunity to present this briefing on the Miami Forever Climate Ready strategy that we've been working on for the last year. The strategy that we're putting for you today will help the city not only adapt but thrive in the face of increasing risks, increasing flood risks, extreme heat, and storm risks that the city's facing. It'll also set the foundation for actions to mitigate the causes of climate change. The, as you know, City of Miami has always had risks associated with hurricanes. Actually, over the last, since the 1850s, we've had 31 hurricanes. But since 2017, we've had significant increases in the impacts of that. Hurricane Irma, uh, and in our neighbors, Hurricane Maria, Dorian, Michael, we know from evidence that these hurricanes are getting stronger, more precipitation, and with sea level rise, the storm surge impacts are more significant. We also have increasing stresses around sea level rise with tidal flooding um, happening in selected areas. And I will say that with both of these, we've already taken some significant action. The city has a best-in-class emergency management team. It has the strongest wind codes, building codes in the country, if not the world, to defense against hurricanes. And we've installed 50 tidal valves, backflow valves to mitigate the impacts of, of king tides. We're working with the Southeast Florida Climate Change Compact and their unified sea level rise projections. They just updated those projections in December of last year. Those have become our new planning horizon as we work on our stormwater master plan, our infrastructure, and land use plans. We've had more than two and a half times the number of days over 90 degrees. By 2050, we're going to have over 100 days where it feels like it's over 104. <coughs> this has impacts to all of us, but especially our more vulnerable, our elderly, those that work outside, our kids playing outside, people with respiratory diseases. These, they have significantly more impact. We're also seeing, starting to see some economic impacts. Moody's has been asking more questions. Luckily, the city so far has not only maintained but improved its credit rating. That's mostly due to the great fiscal management of our administration, but also because of how we're responding to this threat through the Miami Forever bond, through our planning. NFIP, our flood insurance program, is also talking about moving to risk-based insurance. So far, we're already giving a 15% discount to our residents on insurance because of the work and our participation in the community rating score. All of you understand this as being important. In November last year, you unanimously voted to declare a climate emergency and urge our state and federal government to do the same and for this administration to come back with that, a comprehensive plan in response. This is your comprehensive plan in response. Um, so how was this developed? We, I counted this morning, we had input from over 700 people on this plan. We looked to best practices nationally and internationally. We landed on most inspiration from Climate Ready Boston, a climate adaptation plan. We had input from many departments within the city and our resilience action group, but most specifically our resilience in public works, our planning, our emergency management, our office of capital improvements, and our communications department. Um, we also had a lot of different expert in input through our Urban Land Institute uh, advisory panel, through our resilience hubs that was hosted by the Urban Sustainability Directors Network, and our Climate Resilience Committee, who helped prioritize the actions in this, in this uh, strategy. We went out to residents and businesses 
throughout. We had eight in neighborhoods throughout the city. We had input between those and our online survey from 480 residents and businesses. So some of the priorities we heard from those residents, first and foremost, they want to be um, informed. They want to understand their risks. They want to understand what they can do about it. And they want to be engaged in the city's planning process, continue to be engaged going forward. They had a big priority on all things green infrastructure, whether we're talking about tree canopy or living shorelines, and having that integrated with our infra gray infrastructure improvements. We, they want str even stronger building codes and land use codes around our waterfront, which we've been working on, carbon mitigation, grid hardening, and uh, making sure our drains are cleared, our, our basic operations. So this strategy sets forth five main goals. We have 15 objectives in those goals. Each are outlined as short, medium, and long term with different kinds of actions. Some are plans, some are policies, some are programs, projects, protocols. And we have 86 actions. Many of these actions are gonna inform future actions. In each of these goals, we've really been building the train as we're driving it. We know we needed to move forward on many actions. So for instance, in the area goal one, data-driven and hum human-centered decision-making, we already launched our stormwater master plan. We already surveyed all our seawalls. We've installed a pilot program for a flood sensor network. That needs to be a citywide network. We've been building our GIS platform. That needs to be much more user-friendly, ways that we can access new data as we move forward. And we've launched the greenhouse gas inventory, which we should have completed by Earth Day this year. Goal two is in response to that request from the public around informing, engaging, and preparing. Uh, want more CERT trainings, which are the Community Emergency Response Team. We trained 100 over the last two years and are looking to continue to build that program. We want to build resilience hubs, community centers, where before and after a, a, a disaster, they could, residents can access this to cool off, charge their phones, access ice, food, whatever they need. Um, and to provide more accessible information on what people can do to address their homes and properties. Goal three is protecting our waterfront. This is our first line of defense. This is why we had the Urban Land Institute here to inform us. They gave us not only great recommendations on our design standards and seawall elevation requirements, but also financing, robust recommendations on how to finance that because it's both only a third of our, 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 less than a third of our shoreline is publicly owned. Most of it is privately owned. The fourth goal is to invest in resilient and smart infrastructure. Our public voted for the Miami Forever bond, and that has given us a huge shot in the arm towards moving forward on coming up with criteria that really take a holistic look at resilience and sustainability as we go forward, whether we're talking about our stormwater infrastructure or housing or parks. We need to look at solutions that not only address adaptation, but also carbon mitigation and um, look at innovative financing mechanisms to meet those requirements. And the last goal is to promote adaptive neighborhoods and buildings. Miami 21 is a very strong foundation. It, build, it, it, it starts with prioritizing walkable, uh, mixed-use neighborhoods, transit-oriented development. What this does, this review, which all of you have supported going forward, is to take the priorities of resilience, affordability, mobility, and, and make sure that we're looking into the future of where we want density, how we want to build, uh, going forward, and to look at our participation in the community rating score system and, and, and provide further discounts to residents on their insurance programs. And, fi and finally, 
provide a series of tools and resources and financing resources to property owners on how they can adapt their properties. The first of that on your agenda today is to accept a grant from the Urban Sustainability Directors Network to create those tools for our owners, operators of uh, affordable housing to make their facilities resilient and efficient for the residents inside. Uh, and with that, the, the, this will be, the, is only effective in how effectively it's implemented. It's gonna take strong focus from this body to move forward the policies, to approve some of the finance funding that's gonna be needed to resource this strategy. It makes up a third of our citywide strategic plan for the next three years. And so all departments will be reporting on it. And it has interwoven our Resilient 305 strategy and our participation in the Global um, uh, Commission on Climate Adaptation. So with that, just to let you know that all our residents can have access to our information by signing up to our biweekly newsletter on resilience and... Uh, just open up, see if you have any questions. Thank you very much, ma'am. I want to thank you for the fine job you're doing, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.